Winter is the classic Don't Starve Harsh season that carried over from vanilla to ROG. The game becomes more difficult because of freezing, lack of resources, and other dangerous hazards. While this episode will attempt to focus on introducing you to the season, particularly things to consider in your first winter after the autumn start, there are several reoccurring overarching patterns that you may already be familiar with. Additionally, the information can be applied to all winters throughout your entire Don't Starve career. In order to survive winter, you have to understand the concept of the season. I'll begin with an overview of the season, and certain concepts and mentalities you should have. The first day of winter begins on day 21, immediately after autumn, and it lasts for 16 days, ending on day 37 when spring begins. During this time, freezing becomes a constant issue. Daytime becomes shorter, dusk and night become longer, certain mob behaviors change, and some food sources and most crops will essentially stop growing. Contrary to what new players may think, winter is not the season of death. It's just a really slow and methodical season. Sure, the freezing mechanic means you're on a harsher timer than usual, but that's basically it. And it can be easily remedied by staying near your base. If you prepared well before the season began, you can actually just camp out near your base for almost the entire season. Just like how some animals hoard food for winter, you're expected to do the same. Except instead of just food, you're hoarding resources as well. And with those resources, you're expected to spend your time being productive. Building a larger base, expanding your research, getting ready for spring and summer. Essentially what I'm saying is, most of winter is preparation, and a little bit of it is execution. In other words, what you do before winter will greatly influence how well you do in winter. This is why I emphasize the importance of autumn survival, even though it's by far the easiest season. So make sure you check out that episode first. Since winter is a more advanced topic, a lot of this episode will assume you've already seen the autumn start episode, or at least have a good understanding of your preparation goals in autumn. Freezing is the primary hardship of winter. As you distance yourself from a source of heat like a fire pit, you'll slowly freeze. As indicated by the ice effects around the border of your screen, the colder your body gets, the more ice forms, which results in you taking damage over time. While the damage is minimal, it does ignore damage reduction and can add up to dangerous amounts. This is more noticeable on characters with lower maximum health. For example, 10 seconds of freezing will damage approximately 12 HP. If you're playing a frail character like Maxwell, that's 16% of your maximum health lost. Compared to a character like Wilson, who has double Maxwell's health, he only loses 8% of his maximum health in 10 seconds. But of course, like most things in Don't Starve, if you prepared well, freezing should not be an issue. The pickaxes that you use to mine resources in autumn and left at 3% durability can be used to make thermal stones. Thermal stones store heat from your fire pit, allowing you to sustain a higher body temperature for a longer period of time without a fire nearby. With a thermal stone, you'll be able to wander around the map in the cold for quite a long time without having to reheat yourself. I recommend having at least two stones in your base. Set them near your fire pits while it's ignited, and the stones will heat up on their own. Thermal stones have five different colors to indicate their temperature. White is freezing, blue is cold, gray is neutral, yellow is warm, and orange is hot. Keep in mind that the strength of your fire does matter when heating thermal stones. A large fire will produce an orange stone relatively quickly, but as the fire dissipates, it may only reach yellow. Carry one thermal stone around whenever you can this season. More than one stone isn't necessary. If the stone in your inventory starts to freeze up, drop it and swap it with one of the thermal stones near your fire pit before moving around again. Note that this requires you to keep the fire going, so all that turf, beefalo wool, Manure and other fuel type items you gathered in autumn will start to pay off here. You don't have to keep the fire on all the time, but a proactive player will be ready to move around constantly, making efficient use of their time, so it's a goal to strive towards. Use the stone's color as an indicator of your own body heat. Orange is great, yellow is good, blue is reaching dangerous levels, and white is of course, freezing. This will give you a rough idea of how much time you have left before you start to freeze and need to recharge. Alongside the thermal stone, winter gear helps against freezing as well. Ignore the rabbit earmuffs, they're a waste of time and resources for a pathetically weak item. Use only the winter hat or beefalo hat. The beefalo hat is the most ideal item because it provides the highest tier of insulation in the game. Keep the hat on as much as you can. If you're playing Wilson or Weber, their beards also provide insulation, making those characters quite good in winter. Wilson's beard takes 15 days to grow to its maximum size, Weber's takes 9. Planning around these timers can be helpful for your overall survival experience, but particularly in winter. Each time you shave, you gain 10 sanity, which can be good for your sustain. 
However, you should give yourself 15 days as Wilson and 9 days as Weber to grow out the beard by the time winter arrives so you'll have the full insulation value. If you're far from your base and your temperature is dropping, another option is to burn down a flammable object with a torch. Ideally, trees should be burned because they produce the largest fires and can then be cut down for charcoal afterwards, but anything flammable works if you really need the heat. This even includes taking a piece of manure, log, grass, anything flammable from your inventory and dropping it on the ground and lighting it. Be careful when burning down objects though, especially trees in a forest. The fire can spread and destroy an entire biome if you aren't careful. Clear flammable objects away from the object you're planning to use as a makeshift campfire. And especially keep your eye out for picked grass tufts, mushrooms, and other small flammable objects that are difficult to see. If any of these catch on fire, you may burn down more than you're planning to. Another way to combat freezing while away from your base is to make a pit stop or a mini base. Drop a fire pit in a convenient location, keeping in mind the rules of base building. Preferably you want to put one of these near immovable resources like the Pig King, a desert with cacti, a marsh biome with reeds, or any other potential secondary base location. This will give you a place to recharge your body and stone temperature without having to go back to your main base. And in the long run, if you have these mini bases or bases set up, you can maintain a good body temperature anywhere on the map. If you've mined enough rocks to make multiple fire pits, then you should also have multiple thermal stones that can be dropped near these fire pits because the 3% durability pickaxes can be converted into thermal stones. While it may be difficult to craft this many in the early game, it's definitely something to strive for if you can do it. But of course, don't do it for the sake of doing it, just because it may be a good strategy. Only do it if you're actually planning to leave your base and head in that direction for a long period of time, otherwise you're just wasting resources and time. Food is one of the most immediate concerns in every season, but in winter, this is especially the case because some previously available resources are no longer an option. Food that must be grown, like berries, take forever to bear fruit, to the point where it seems like time has stopped, so essentially only unpicked berries are available. This is where preparation in autumn, once again, is extremely important. If you've gathered at least 20 to 30 birch nuts, then they should last for the entirety of winter. While regular birch nuts aren't edible, cooked ones are. Roasted birch nuts can be used as food to nibble on or in crockpot recipes. If you don't already have at least one crockpot, make this your priority. Two to three is a good amount, so you can make bigger batches of food all at once instead of making them one by one and wasting time. Once you have at least one crockpot, one of the most powerful sources of food becomes available. Meatballs. Meatballs are very easy to make, take little time to prepare, and restore a large chunk of hunger. The easiest formula is one meat and three fillers. Monster meat will likely be your most frequently used meat item, but any meat works. Just don't put more than one monster meat into the formula or you'll get monster lasagna. The filler in this recipe includes anything you can stuff into the crock pot that isn't twigs, honey, or mandrake. Viable fillers include carrots, berries, roasted birch nuts, mushrooms, butterflies, and the list goes on. If you add too much meat or certain types of filler, you may get other items from the crock pot, so keep it simple. You can check the wiki for more information about the crock pot if needed. One of the most abundant resources in winter is ice. Ice can be mined from glaciers that are located in the rocky and mosaic biomes. These are the glaciers that spawn with your world, and they're not renewable. If you've already mined those glaciers, then you can walk near the edge of the world and trigger pangles to spawn. When the pangles spawn, you can hit tab, check your map, and find out where they're going to be settling down. The spot will be surrounded by glaciers that will instantly form, allowing you to mine them for more ice. So why mention ice? Because in the absence of berries and other grown resources, ice is your primary filler for meatballs. One meat and three ice works as a recipe, and because of how easy it is to get both monster meat and ice, you basically have an endless supply of food. Ice never melts inside an ice box, so if you have any extras, you can always keep them from making an ice fling for summer or more meatballs. Boomerangs are great for farming and food. Smacking snowbirds will yield either a morsel or an azure feather. Morsels can be used to make meatballs and other food items. Azure feathers can be used to make blow darts, which is one of the most powerful weapons against strong enemies like giants. When using boomerangs, make sure to hold down the interact key when the boomerang returns to you. By default, this is set to spacebar on the keyboard. Holding down the interact key makes it so you'll automatically grab the boomerang as it gets close to you, so you don't have to have insane clicking accuracy to retrieve the boomerang. Just be careful you aren't near other objects that can be interacted with, or you may grab an item instead of the boomerang. Note that if you're playing a character with a damage modifier of less than 1, such as Wendy or Wes, the boomerang will not kill birds in one hit. Another way to obtain food relatively easily is to just wander into the marsh biome. 
The mobs there are constantly doing battle with one another, and each one of them drops at least one meat item. Fish, frog legs, monster meat. It's a buffet of meatball ingredients, and you don't even have to fight them. Just weave through and pick up the spoils of war. Just be careful not to get caught in the crossfire. Drying wrecks are great, but it takes the meat a long time to dry. This is where a majority, if not all of your non-monster big meat should go. Big jerky is a great source of health and sanity, so having at least a couple around is a good idea. Try getting an early start on the drying process in late autumn if you plan on using them. As you can see, winter is quite a detailed season, and this is just the tip of the glacier. There's a lot of information to learn, so don't be discouraged if you don't quite get it immediately. Keep working on efficient time usage and preparation in autumn more than anything else, and you'll notice how chill winter actually is. Since this episode was just an introduction to the season, there will be more episodes that go over other topics related to winter in the future. But for now, thanks for watching, and don't freeze.